Hello everyone and welcome to the Weekly Stitch. I'm Amy Nicole and I'm coming to you from sunny, hot, and humid South Texas. Yes, you may have noticed that this video has a new name, the Weekly Stitch. I was kind of feeling like this week in the studio was a little bit of a mouthful. Um, also, the Weekly Stitch corresponds with my monthly newsletter, The Monthly Stitch, so I thought that was a little bit better of a fit. I've been thinking a lot about my YouTube videos, doing some slow tweaking of my photo cover photos, thinking about how I can make these videos better for you guys. So you will see some small changes um, coming into effect with the next few videos. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. But not to be confused, the my weekly catch-up videos will now be called The Weekly Stitch, and you can find all of those in the Weekly Stitch playlist, which I will link up here. And um, you will find all of the old ones there as well that were under the title This Week in the Studio. They'll all be in the same place still, just the name is changing. So if you want to go back and look at if you're new and you want to go back and look at all the old ones, um, you can feel free to do so. So the weekly stitch, so much better to say. Um, a lot cuter out of my little logo too, so I think it is a welcome change and of course it pairs well with the monthly stitch. If you're not subscribed to my monthly newsletter, be sure to check that out. Um, I like to do it a little bit more of like a more personal blog form so you get a little bit more behind the scenes there um, I've been sharing a lot about my plans for my new sewing space once we move to the new house um, things like that just a little bit more uh, personal communication between me and you guys and what's going on in the studio as well as of course first sneak peeks at patterns and blog posts uh, some freebies over there as well and of course you get my free Chris Crop PDF pattern whenever you sign up so don't miss that I will link it in the show notes below so you can if subscribe to my newsletter if you're not subscribed already but this is the weekly stitch so let's get on with what's been going on with me this week if you follow me on Instagram you know that I succumbed to some last-minute sewing this week I try not to do that um, just because I, especially with a year of slow sewing, it's all about slowing down and enjoying the process. Um, I also try not to do any sporadic sewing and while this was a quick sew, um, hurried to finish in time for something, it was not sporadic. It was a sew that I had been planning on doing for a while. So that is my Sparrow Wrap dress. that. I made in this beautiful red linen from my stash. It's such a great quality. A little bit heavier of a linen. Super soft. Moves well. Um, just perfect pairing for this dress, I feel like. And I got it in my head earlier in the week, like Monday, that I wanted to finish it for 4th of July, which was Thursday. So I had already printed it out but that was it I hadn't cut I hadn't taped the pattern together I hadn't cut the pattern together nothing so at my Tuesday night sewing group I taped and cut the pattern together when I got home I cut out the fabric and then Wednesday instead of working on stuff I should have been working on whenever I got home from work I worked on this <laughs> and I sewed it together and I tried it on didn't like the way it fit. Well, first I sewed together the bodice. I could tell that the adjustments I made with to take the remove the pleats. I'll talk about this more in my actual video, but um, the adjustments I made to take out the pleats it made the bust start bigger, which made the cup even bigger. It was already probably too big to begin with, so I went back to the drawing board. I actually scrapped those bodice pieces, which is very unlike me. I usually will try to save the fabric as much as possible, but I had extra fabric and I was like, whatever. I just want to get this done. I just want to get the fit right. So I 
changed the way that I took out the pleats. I also did a small bus adjustment. Sewed it together. The darts were moving too far in. If you follow me on Instagram, I talked about all of this in my stories. The darts were moving too far in. I decided I was going to need to take out the side seams. So I did that the next morning, <laughs> which would be Thursday, which would be the day of the needing to wear the dress. So the Thursday morning I did all the adjustments, which was taking out the side seams, moving the back straps in a little bit because at that point they were falling off. I needed a no narrow shoulder adjustment. Um, and I slimmed down the hip curve, fixed it all, literally snipped the threads, threw it on, and walked out the door just in time for my our barbecue that we go to every year. Have you ever done that? I'm sure you have. It was crazy. It was I. I mean, I've done some last minute sewing before, but that was like the most last minute. So after wearing it to the barbecue, I'll post a picture up here. It was super cute. Um, really perfect for the day, super comfy, but um, the straps I felt like were too far out and if I did anything with my shoulders it was pushing everything and making a gap. So I went back and moved the straps in and scooped out some of this armhole here. I will go back to the pattern and make an actual narrow shoulder adjustment to the pattern. This has kind of told me that I just needed me making narrow shoulder adjustments, especially any kind of tank. Um, with a shirt, it's not really as noticeable. Like, I don't really like it with sleeves. It doesn't really bother me. But with a tank, like my all of my Ogden camis tend to slip off or just be set really far out on my shoulders. So I'm going to go ahead and state to the world to remind myself that anytime I make a tank, I need to make a narrow shoulder adjustment. So, long story short, my dress is done. She's still hanging up here because she needs to be photographed, but I just love it. I love this bright, vibrant um, cherry linen. Um, I also pre-washed and dried it. It has a really nice, worn look. This linen might be a blend because it doesn't wrinkle as bad and it's super um super soft i also of course added inseam pockets so can't wait to get that photograph for you guys might do that this week i don't know also i talked to you guys last week about the ogden ida swap i found out who my partner was she reached out to me i asked her if she had any um stipulations as far as colors or prints that she absolutely does not like so I would have a better idea of what fabric to pick because obviously I have a lot to choose from and I didn't want to pick something that she wouldn't like if she hates orange I don't want to just pick orange so she said she loves blue she loves floral she's not a huge fan of yellows and reds unless it's like incorporated into a print so I was looking in my stash and I think I'm going to use, if I can squeak it out, this um, really cool um, silk, it's about a yard, I need to put this in the wash, um, silk, it's like a digital print, I don't know if you can see how like realistic those flowers are. It's like a photo real print. This is the front. Um, this is from an internship and I was just kind of hanging on to it. I It's so hard for me to get rid of something like make something for someone else in this fabric because I, as you can see it's super soft and drapey and beautiful and the print is pretty cool but I just I don't wear a lot of white and there's a lot of white in this. I like white. Um, I'm just a dirty person so I just don't, I try to steer clear from white because it doesn't stay white with me in my life. So she likes floral. I was looking at her uh, Instagram and I think that she, I think that this will look really nice on her. I don't know if I have enough <laughs> so I cut out her size because um, we're not the same size so I couldn't tell by my my Ogden that I already had cut out so I cut out her size I haven't 
taped it together yet. Um, I'm hoping that it's enough. Um, I'm also hoping that I have enough of this lining to do a full lining since it is white and um, pretty see-through. I don't want to do just the partial facing. I want to do a full lining so there's not that weird line. Um, hopefully I have enough of this which is like a nice softer lining. Um, <clears throat> I have this if need be which, but it's a little bit, it's cream, which I don't think really will matter, but it's a little bit stiffer, and I don't know, it just doesn't, it seems like it's too formal for like an Ogden cami. Um, if I have to, I can use that. I guess I could always just use muslin as a lining, but it's so different than this. I don't know. These are all the things that I'm thinking about in my head. If this isn't enough, I am going to use something totally different, which is this, which is um, a cotton. Um, it almost has like a, a wax print feel. Um, it's blue. <laughs> she likes blue. It's kind of floral. It has like a leafy motif on it. So this has been in my stash forever, and someone gave it to me. They either it was like their grandma's D stash or they found it or maybe they were trying to make something I don't really know um, but it's very weird it's like someone was trying to make a skirt obviously they were gonna gather it but there's a seam down the center front which I don't really get um, it has pockets I don't know I was just gonna use it as fabric and um, I think there would be enough here to do an Ogden with that weird seam in the front though means I might have to give her a seam in the front which I don't necessarily want to do so a lot of stuff with the Ogden is still up in the air I'm hoping that I can squeeze it out of this I'm really good at squeezing things so I think I can make this work this is my second choice um, it's always funny like when people either give you stuff from like a grandma stash like there's when you find like partially made things it's so interesting like I want to know the story behind why like what is going on here um anyways so that's what's going on with my Ogden Ida swap I'm gonna try to do that this week because she was saying that if I could finish it in time she'd like to take it on her vacay at the end of the month um so hoping to whip that out this week. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I made myself some new fabric scrap earrings with what was some leftovers from my Sparrow Wrap dress. I've been doing all these sketches and stuff of fun different earrings I can make and I thought it would be cute to make like giant bows that just hang from the corners. So I just put a little grommet in the bow. Um, I thought I was gonna have red grommets, but I didn't, so white. It's fine. It's still cute. Um, I love them. They're so fun. I made a ton of earrings out of uh, this and then just some other scraps. Like sometimes when I'm just sitting in my studio and I like I finished this and I wasn't really necessarily done creating but I didn't necessarily have anything else that I wanted to like start a new project so I just like piddle around and make earrings and it's really fun and just experimental and really goes along with that sort of slow sewing movement idea and um, I just I really enjoy it. it it really charges my creativity it's not directly sewing related and I'm working with my hands and I'm just sort of fiddling around and coming up with new ideas and designs so I have a lot of fun with that. Um, so these are my newest my newest earrings. These are going to be going up in my Etsy shop if you're interested. Um, if you want to make them yourself, they're super easy. Like literally find a tutorial on how to make a bow. Make a bow, stick a grommet in it, stick a jump ring in it, connect it to a earring hoop. Voila! Bow earrings. So <laughs> that is about it for what's going on with me in the studio this week. My weekly crush is not sewing related, but I love to listen to audiobooks when I sew, and I just finished Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I've been wanting to watch the TV show, 
but I, I'm one of those people who I like to read the book first. So I just finished it on audio. I can't recommend it enough. I really enjoyed it. The narrator was great. Um, I just kept wanting to go back and listen to it. So uh, if you are an audiobook person and you haven't listened to that one yet, check it out. If you're an audiobook person and you have any suggestions for me for audiobooks, um, please let me know in the comments below. Of course, um, in between audiobooks, I like to listen to podcasts and stuff too, but when I'm listening to audiobooks, I feel like I'm like catching up on my reading, but I'm sewing at the same time. So it's like double, double productivity. <laughs> Um, so let me know if you know of any good audiobooks in the comments below that I can add to my list. Uh, if you want to follow me on Goodreads, I will link that below as well. Thank you so much for joining me this week in the studio for the studio, the week, what is it? The Weekly Stitch. <laughs> Will help if I can actually remember what I'm calling things. Thank you so much for joining me for the weekly stitch. Uh, do you like that title better? Let me know about that in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next week. Bye.